Franks, and I have the amazing privilege to be the pastor at High Country United Church of Christ. Where technically we are in Boone, North Carolina. Our address is Vilas, and from wherever you come from, if you are worshiping with us on this morning or on a Tuesday or a Thursday, whenever you are watching this, know that you are welcome here. This is being recorded on Saturday, April 11th, 2020, as we celebrate and get ready for Easter tomorrow morning. And it's a really good chance here in the high country that it's not going to be nearly this sunny. And so we are here today celebrating that the sun is out, the skies are blue, and that the flowers are in amazing bloom. And so as we ponder what new life is, what resurrection means, I invite you, as you worship with us this morning, that you too would ponder what Easter means to you. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? <laughs> Don't take it awful hard, just cause I laugh. <laughs> As if I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like life, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance as if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame I rise, up from a past rooted in pain I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave, and so I rise, I rise, I rise.
Good morning, High Country UCC. Happy Easter morning to you. This hymn is called the Easter Celebration. It's a familiar hymn tune, but the words have been changed by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette to fit our times. <laughs> One of the scriptures for this year's Easter selections is from the book of Jeremiah. The people of Jeremiah's time were going through great trauma. Jeremiah was frustrated with their behavior for many chapters, but ultimately his tone changes and he prophesies God's promise that they will be built back up from the devastation they have endured. They will again feel joy and they will begin to plan for the future, planting vineyards on the hills, even in the midst of exile and pain. Hear these words of promise. Hear the reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. The Lord proclaims, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. As Israel searched for a place of rest, the Lord appeared to them from a distance. I have loved you with a love that lasts forever. And so with unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Again, I will build you up and you will be rebuilt, virgin Israel. Again, you will play your tambourines and dance with joy. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. Farmers will plant and then enjoy the harvest. The time will come when the watchmen shout from the highlands of Ephraim, Get ready, we're going up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Thus endeth the reading. Good morning, everybody, and happy Easter to you. Before I play this tune, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this guitar. This is a metal body guitar that was made in 1932 out in California. And before electric guitars, they were looking for ways to make a guitar louder. And this was the scheme that they came up with. And for me to own a guitar like this is really a, an honor and a privilege. Because when I play it, I, I have the thoughts and of all the history that this guitar has gone through. And I think about the people that made the guitar and the people that would buy this guitar. And they would be people that were born around the turn of the century. And uh, at this point, they had already lived through World War I. And then at the same time, the Spanish flu pandemic. Then they were in the midst of the Great Depression. And they didn't know that just 10 years from from then, the country would be entering into another war. But they survived, and we're going to survive this. There's a bright place somewhere. <laughs> Oh, there's a bright place 
God of new dawns, new awakenings, new life, we hear your voice this morning saying, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. On this Easter day, you tell us we will be rebuilt and made new. In gratitude, we hear you, loving God, and we believe you. And so we will celebrate the gift of new life in Christ, even in the midst of fear. You give us eyes to see through tears, songs to sing with throats tight with emotion. We know you help the weary rise up out of the ashes. Give us the courage to be your light and hope in this world today. Amen. Oh, gathered choirs are seen. No banners lead the way. Oh, God of love and promise, where's joy this Easter day? With sanctuaries empty, the homes become the place. We ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. morning. When a loved one dies, we are devastated. In the initial shock of grief, all we want, and we want this with our whole being, is to see that person again, to somehow reanimate and re-inhabit the world where they existed. The impossibility of this fills us with despair. Our ancient stories show the disciples after Jesus' death in the midst of their full-blown grief and disbelief. And yet, incredibly, into the heart of that grief came a stunning revelation. Life had overcome death. It is as if your loved one had walked up to you again, alive and whole. Your heart explodes with joy. You cry out. You are giddy with amazement. A deep, incredulous celebration fills your soul. Love has won out. Love has changed the world. This is Easter to me. Is this possible in our lives? Today's worship will say, yes, it can happen. Come and see, live and love. 
This is the heart of the matter. Christ is risen. Let the people say, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our joy won't come from worship that's in a crowded room, but from the news of women who saw the empty tomb. Our joy comes from disciples who ran with haste to see, who heard that Christ is risen and then by grace believed. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could embalm him. Very early on Sunday morning as the sun rose, they went to the tomb. They worried out loud to each other, who will roll back the stone from the tomb for us? Then they looked up, saw that it had been rolled back. It was a huge stone. And they walked right in. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed all in white. They were completely taken aback, astonished. He said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed on the cross. He's been raised up. He's here no longer. You can see for yourselves that the place is empty. Now on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there exactly as he said. They got out as fast as they could besides themselves their heads swimming, stunned. They said nothing to anyone. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So most years, Lent is one of my favorite times of the church calendar. It seems to put a pause on life. We practice less consumption. We spend more time in reflection. We gather more often with church families. But for all of us, Lent has been very different this year. While many of us are practicing less consumption, and spending more time in reflection, this hasn't been by choice. Though we might look back at this time in a few years and see growth and beauty out of it, right now we struggle just to think about how long we'll be here and whether we'll make it out okay. I felt the same sentiment this Good Friday. I don't need another place to see death and destruction I don't need to focus on suffering when I have so much that I can see around me. But Friday comes anyway, and Friday passes. And we tell the story of Friday because we have the story of today. The resurrection. The new life after death. The gospel story of Easter that we read from today is for me, one of the harder to talk about in most years. There's not really much to preach about when the women just don't say anything at all. <laughs> what are you supposed to say about that? <laughs> but this year, I think I get it. The women encounter the empty tomb and they're taken aback. Then a figure all in white tells them that Jesus has been raised up and that he will be there with them in Galilee if they just move forward. Wow. Just keep going. And the women are so shocked and thrown off guard that they go and tell no one. This is the, the original ending to the Gospel of Mark. The scholars have added to it over the years and found other manuscripts. Many scholars still believe that this is the actual ending that Mark wrote. And this year, I get it. I get why they didn't want to shout this from the rooftops. 
Their community was mourning. Their hope was lost. Was this really true? Will we really see him again? Or will we go back and tell our people and give them false hope? Will they be crushed when he doesn't actually return? Will they believe us at all? I understand their hesitancy because it's the same hesitancy I have today preaching resurrection on Easter morning in the midst of a pandemic. But the truth is, resurrection is bigger than just a body gone from the tomb. It isn't one moment in time and one instance. It is something that Jesus practiced throughout his life and throughout his ministry. Jesus practiced resurrection every time he spoke out against the empire. He practiced resurrection when he blessed the poor and outcast. He practiced resurrection when he spoke to women at wells and lepers on the street. Because in these instances, he brought people back to life. He reminded them that they were worthy of love and a place in society. And in these instances, he woke up those listening to the injustice in their society. We celebrate resurrection today because it's powerful. It is a changing of our minds and a renewal of our faith. We, as the body of Christ here on earth, Practice resurrection every time we give out food boxes at church for those who can't afford to feed their families right now. We practice resurrection every time we call for livable wages for those in the service industry keeping our society running. We practice resurrection when we call for health care that does not discriminate based on race, leaving communities of color most vulnerable during a global health crisis. We choose to practice resurrection when we wake up to and call out injustice. This is the good news of Easter morning. This is the good news of the empty tomb. That we can keep practicing resurrection because Jesus gave that to us. We're reminded that Jesus' followers continued his ministry after death. They saw the power of that resurrection and it fueled them to form communities where people took care of one another and communities where they came together for a common good. During this time of hardship in our society of a global pandemic, where do you see injustice? And what will we do now that we've seen the power of resurrection. Amen. We thank you that on Easter your church is blessed to be a scattered faithful body that's due In Western Watauga County, the sun is in the process of setting. It's a Saturday evening, April the 11th, 
around 7.30. And I show up here wondering, do I, do I put on a robe? Do I, do I put on a stole or not? And the conviction in me, the belief in me that believes that we are called to be an Easter people, says absolutely. Then the question is, do I do this inside a building? Or do I do this in my house so that we don't hear the traffic? And I'm like, nope. Because this is real life. Maybe real life not to have on a robe and a stove. We've cleaned it up a bit in that regard. Here we are in a pandemic. As the sun is setting over here on my right, I stand here knowing that the traffic is still happening, so we're all not at home. We're all not cowered inside our circles. We're still out here. We're still showing up. We're still taking showers and, and getting dressed for the day. We're still believing that when we wake up today, when we wake up tomorrow, when we wake up the next day, there's going to be a reason for us to wake up and to stand up and to breathe into our lungs such they fill up fully. Sarah mentioned earlier in our worship this text of Mark that ends so abruptly on fear and let's not talk about it. They said nothing to anyone. And that, my friends, is when we don't know what to do next. There are all manner of studies in today's world, 2,000 years later, that say when we don't talk about it, that fear, that anxiety, well, that begins to take root within us. And even the biblical theologians and commentators say, wrestle with this tension. What are you going to do with this anxiety and fear? And we have some options. We can stay locked in our houses. We can run away as fast as we can from an empty tomb. And we can run off home never to be seen again. But what we know, as we read on into the biblical text, that they were seen again. And we read on into the Acts of the Apostles and we begin to find out that even though they were afraid and they were scared in that moment, that another new day came and another new day came and another new day came. And they kept waking up and they kept breathing into their lungs. And they began to understand that the time that they had was rich. That the lessons that Jesus had taught them were now embedded into their essence. And they began to understand that a just world for all meant that they were going to have to keep waking up and keep showing up. And that fear and that trepidation slowly began to subside. It is right when we get afraid. There is truth in our anxiety. We take those emotions and we go deep, finding a grief, pouring out our laments. When we lose someone that we love and that we cherish, when we don't know what's going to happen in our world, it is right to grieve and to lament. And in the process of those prayers, in the process of pouring out, those understandings of life, that's called winter. And we go deep into the earth. And when we go deep into the darkness, we begin to find a courage there. Our wounds begin to find healing. Our soul begins to find nourishment. And we begin to yearn for the light. And as this light is waning on this Saturday night called Holy Saturday, what I know is that there are going to be people around the world that are stoking fires. And they're believing that when they keep vigil, that tomorrow morning the sun is going to rise. And the next day the sun 
is going to rise. And when their bellies are empty, there is a belief that somehow, some way, that food is going to emerge. And not always does that happen. There are moments in our ecosystem, there are moments in our lifespans, there are moments when people do die of hunger because we don't all get there at the right time. And we're not in control of the greater grand system. Our job, our calling, is to stay focused on what is offered to us and where we are being called. The disciples ran away that day and didn't say a word to anybody. Who would? He's just been crucified. Now there's an empty tomb. Are they gonna blame them? for stealing the body? Are they too gonna now, if they start talking about he's really risen, they too gonna get arrested and crucified? There's discernment in our lives. And we're called ultimately to be an Eastering people where Easter is a verb. Easter is an action. And after we settle and allow the dust to settle, after we allow that fear and that anxiety begin to percolate down into our system, the light of a new day begins to offer us new visions of how we are called to be. The amazing work that is going on in the midst of this pandemic, a pandemic that could have with fear and anxiety locked us in our houses, has been amazing. The amount of songs that are popping up on YouTube as all kind of channels are showing up to offer us kindness and joy and celebration. The amount of food that is beginning to percolate into different varieties of places and peoples is amazing. The amount of different funds that are going to help those that have lost their jobs is amazing because we are an Eastering people. And we're going to wake up another day. We're going to figure out that we put on a robe and a stole because that is our work. Because we offer an opportunity to hope. We offer an opportunity to smile and to laugh and to offer kindness one to another again as we love our neighbors as ourselves. When we are called to live into being an Eastering people, we are called to pray, to use science to help guide us when we're called to stay at home and to shut down our buildings, we're going to stay at home and shut down our building. And then we're going to start coming up with solutions for all manner of digital connections, for sending letters, for making phone calls, for figuring out how to still connect because a pandemic, a virus, a stay at home order is not going to keep us in the tomb. People. Beloved, cherished, Eastering people, the tomb is empty. Amen and amen.
when Sarah stood out in a gorgeously bright day and she stood beside this rock and she offered a welcome to us, it just filled my soul with delight. And I am taking her lead as we now pray together as a people called to connect our spirits one with another. For we intentionally believe that there is a still speaking God, that we are continuing to evolve and we are continuing to take one step again, offering our joys and our grief, our laments and our celebrations such that we all move together as one. And if you talk to our members that were here in these first six years particularly, they will tell you some amazing stories of mystery and awe and wonder, certainly of grief and lament as we had some horrific deaths. And still, as Eastering people, we continue to gather, to share our griefs, to share our joys, to connect our spirits one to another. And so in the comment section or out loud in your house to your dog or your cat or your spouse or your other people that are there with you, I invite us, let us pray together, connecting our hearts one with the other. I invite you now to offer up your amazing Easter celebrations of hope. We are here also in a time of a pandemic and those deaths are beginning to get rather close to us. Those testing positive are beginning to get rather close to us. So I invite us in this time to offer our grief, our lament, our anxiety, our fears, because when we talk about it, those begin to know healing. God of hope and joy, God of lament and grief. We claim that we are an Eastering people, that we will continue to show up. We will continue to pray. We will continue to join our hearts one with another. We will continue to read and to study. And when it is our time to say yes to the cup that takes us to a cross, we believe that that journey will be as it should be. Because we believe that in the end, the story goes that the tomb will become empty. It doesn't make the choice, the decision, any less daunting, any less scary. And yet on the other side, the birds are still going to sing. The traffic is still going to flow. The grass is still going to come up and turn green form a resilience within us that calls us to connect with those whom we haven't connected with, that calls us to pick up the phone, to write the letter, to implore us to reach out. And as we live within a fear and an anxiety, open our mouths that we might talk about it so that we get ever closer to a community of faith that draws its strengths one from another. Hear now these prayers. We lift them up to you. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer, heal us. Fill us with your strength. And as the sun sets and the sun rises and the wind blows, may we understand that this is the fire of the Holy Spirit as it moves among us, always. Amen and amen.
Thanks to all the people who made worship happen today. It is a long, long list. You all have stepped up to the plate and you have found brave spaces that you probably didn't know you had. Uh, for the music and the altar and all the images that you have sent in, thank you. Uh, this is what happened yesterday when I went out to make a clip. And we are doing church a little differently. We're sending in our pictures. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to do clips and make videos work. And any and all feedback that you offer, we are listening to that. Uh, we are still listening and pondering this 11 a.m. time on a Sunday morning. Uh, video clips versus live, uh, figuring out how to see your faces because we need to see that because when somebody jumps into the screen and we can literally see you in your animation, it makes a difference. And so sometimes our clips that we make and our recordings we make, well, they get cut onto the floor. And in this time when we truly are church, I'm hoping that you are reaching out to people that you wouldn't normally reach out to in this space. Are you making calls? Are you sending texts to people who you don't really normally connect with? It will delight their soul. Because in this time of Easter time, when we truly are showing up in our spaces and online, we are changing how our hearts work. We're going to move into a different worship series called Heart of the Matter, where we really do look at what is truly at the bottom of our hearts that matters the most. Uh, using Marsha McPhee to help us out a little bit, we're going to work a little bit simpler. So watch for this space. Uh, watch for emails to come out as we seek to do things just a little differently. Join me in our prayer of dedication. Oh God, we continue to gather in new and different ways to worship and to offer thanks and gratitude, continue to open us to the good news amid tragedy, comfort in our grief, and hope for restoration in our lives. You have shown us that you suffer with us, your love is unconditional, and that your love is stronger than death. Bless what we offer today. Make our efforts move us ever closer to a just world for all. Bless our commitment to continue working for justice, pursuing peace, and sharing your love in these troubled times. And so we dedicate these gifts to the new world that is emerging right now, right here. Amen. Hear this benediction. Go, led by the Spirit, making way for your eyes to be opened and your hearts to be tugged, meeting the miracle of life death, and resurrection of Christ with the gift of your justice-seeking lives each day. Go and practice resurrection. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.